Assalamu alaikum and hello everyone. My name is Muhi Khwaja with American Muslim Community Foundation and today on the Muslim Philanthropy Podcast we have on our special guest Nora Phillips who is the co-founder and legal director of El Otro Lado. Welcome to the show Nora. Thank you so so much for having me. Happy to be here. Of course. Um, so I'm going to ask uh, you to share a little bit about your background and kind of uh, how you started Al Otro Lado, but also before we get into all of that, just really want to get to know you. So uh, please do share about, um, you know, where you grew up, your family life, uh, and where you went to school, and anything and everything that you'd like to share that you did before you started Al Otro Lado. Um, okay, so um, I guess I will just go in chronological order. Um, Makes sense. There, yes. Um, so, uh, and I, I veer off just like, feel free to redirect me sometimes. Mm -hmm. like tangents. Anyway, okay. So, born and raised in uh, a Shorewood, Wisconsin, which is a little village north of Milwaukee. Um, and I lived there until I was about 17. And then I moved to Bloomington, Indiana, where I went to Indiana University. Um, and I, um, so I graduated high school in 98. Um, and then I went to Indiana. Um, I did my uh, bachelor's in French. I did it in like two and a half years. So then I graduated in wow. December of 2000. Yeah, not you're you're kind of smart. Negative 20 out of 10. Do not recommend. <laughs> uh, but thank you. Uh, but to the to the young ones, don't do it. Um, but yeah, okay. So, uh, then I was, it's also like, yeah, anyway, then I moved to back to Milwaukee where I worked as a, uh, special, uh, a special ed teacher's aide. Um, and that was in Milwaukee. And then I was a substitute teacher at my old elementary school. Lord bless your soul. Wow. Which I had left. It's really weird. Okay. So let me just calculate how, cause it was a real short span between when I left elementary school and when I started working there. So there were almost all of my teachers became my colleagues and it was not it was it did was you weird. skip grades before college as well yes yeah, so i was placed a year or ahead um when i started and then with the graduating in uh in the in two and a half years then i was so i was i was like i just turned 20 when everybody I we are talking to a child phenom nora phillips <laughs> child well, genius yeah. In terms of like like advocacy and stuff for um, disabled folks, like I do have a really big learning disability, so I just want people to know that. Well, then that's um, even more power to you. Like, I know, way to go! And I, I also share it with Chris Rock. Oh, interesting. Not, not to brag about my learning disability or anything, but Chris Rock also has nonverbal learning disorder. So I think he's hilarious. Uh, so. Same. Yeah. So I am just like, I actually had a dream that I met him and I was like, hello, sir. Uh, I also have this. And he was like, we should go on tour. And I was like, I've been waiting for you to ask for like 20 years. Maybe this is my way, you know, in. Yeah, name. this is, you're sending it out into the universe and it's going to happen. Please, Chris. Anyway, if you're out there. Um <laughs> Anyway, I'm sorry about that. So, um, so yeah, so then I got my master's and I moved back to Milwaukee and did the, um, uh, did, worked as a paraprofessional, so special needs kids, and then did the whole working as a sub in my former elementary school. Uh, and then we did, and then I, what did I do after that? Then we moved to Brooklyn. So by, by, by the time I got my bachelor's degree, I had already, my husband and I have been together for 20 years. We actually, oh my God, we're at our 15 year wedding anniversary tomorrow. Wait, you just said by the time you had your bachelor's, you were with your husband for 20 Ooh. years? No, ew. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? You're like, <laughs> I have questions. 
<laughs> I'm reporting the authorities right now. Like I know with I know Wisconsin is like out there. Where you're going there, Mister. Sir. Hey, I'm from no, Michigan. No, no, no. We think the South begins at the Ohio border. So, yeah. Uh, I would argue that the uh, sometimes in Michigan the South begins at like south of Detroit. Like I know yeah, people yeah, on true. southern Michigan that have southern accents, and I'm like, but what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe I heard it wrong. What did you intend you did. to say? You did. God, you did. My husband. I'm gonna roll the tape back. Don't worry. (laughs) My my husband and I have a nine month age difference, so that's very important to say. And then also, um, as once he was was one year old and you were three months old, and you were betrothed to each other. No, 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 no. Oh my God, ooh. Oh my God, don't say stuff like that to an at- asylum attorney who works with trafficking victims because I can oh. take it and go, I can get it, make it go real, real, real sad, real quick. All right, we're, we're going to um, bring this back. This is back a very happy, serious podcast. Happy Boulevard. And, yeah, no, happy we are Boulevard. swerving back on. Uh, okay, so then what happened was that I met my husband at in college so I was about to graduate because I did it real quick we both graduated high school in 1996 so it's been 20 years since you've met your husband yeah, exactly. got it it's okay together for it makes 20 sense. Years. I am 40 he is 41 uh, I we have been together for 20 years and we've been officially married for 15 as of tomorrow. Congrats. That's amazing. You know, I think yeah. it'll be clearer if I do like make it Bob Fosse. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, right now my life is still going until the present. So I've basically been dragging him around the country uh-huh. for like doing the things so chicago uh, well, as well you get portland, portland okay. years ago, uh yeah chicago for seven years i got my law degree he got his uh finished up undergrad masters or uh anthropology sociology at loyola masters wow. in nursing at DePaul, and then we were like and then i worked at legal aid in chicago because and then then we moved we were like 29 and we're like the midwest is sort of like ideologically sort of like a i mean it's kind of like a pair of sweatpants where you're just like really comfortable but like not your best sweatpants and you're just like i'm gonna be in these for the rest of my life if i don't get out now and we really just felt sort of ideologically like california was where it's at even though we've never been to LA before but here in California the fashion industry as well is like you can wear sweatpants and that's like a cool thing oh I didn't mean it that way I meant like I get it oh but I I know yeah I know oh lord uh yeah no this was a different kind of sweatpants these were like the Hanes of sweatpants not like the high-end fashion uh, sweatpants Oh, good God, no. These are like, <laughs> uh, these are the like, what, like, what the, what the H-E double hockey sticks am I going to do with my life here? Sweatpants. Yeah, got it. Do you it. know what that means? Did the you Walmart. That? Oh, yeah. I put it together. My dog, I don't know if he, he understood, but okay. I got it. That's yeah. the thing. I'm going to use as many uh, Wisconsin, like, uh, obscenities as I can. H-E Fair double enough. hockey sticks. um okay so what inspired you to go to law school from undergrad uh so i was kind of like figuring out what to do with my life and i was thinking like msw i was thinking because my parents are msws and my sister's Mm -hmm. msw and then I was thinking, like, maybe, like, a PhD, like, some sort of sociological thing, Quebecois, women's studies. My my relatives were trying to push me towards podiatry. I can't even touch my own feet without – I do. I wash them, but I cannot, like, examine. I'm sorry. Podiatrists are extremely important. So, anyway, um, then – People tell me I have flat feet. I don't know how that affects me. But yeah, I mean, it could be really 
Okay, I, you, I have a genetic connective tissue disorder, and so I and I'm a former ballet dancer. Hence the bar. So yeah. I yeah. could really go on a big old musculophysical entire health history tangent. Uh, so we can table that for later to talk. Yeah, about that's it. my other podcast that I have. So I'll bring you on that. Is it called Pod like Podiatry? <laughs> <laughs> Touche. I bet you there is one. If there's not, you need to start it. Okay. Anyway, sorry. So then, and I had lived in New York like 2002 to 2003. Um, and it was very much, you know, post 9-11 high, or like beginning of just like vicious or like not beginning, just vicious Islamophobic backlash going on. And I remember the seeing a line of people, it was like men and boys who had to um, uh, who had to register under? I always forget what it is. Whether it's it's I have dyslexia. Whether it's N Sears or Sevis, which was the horrible. Um, oh can I Google this? It's driving yeah, me crazy. Go for it. I know. I, I heard it's like against the ethical or the the rule. Okay, and of course, honestly, seriously, this is when my my uh, my mouse doesn't work. Are you serious, Mark? Well, there are no rules on my podcast, if I that's mean, what you were getting to. We just have conversations. But so so you see people I mean, having to no register. Yeah, correct. Yeah. And it was like, um, and it was, I think it was NCRs. I'm almost positive. I think Sevis is for uh, F1 students. I'm sorry. I'm getting like non-immigrant visa immigration shame yeah. blushing right now. So that's what this is. So anyway, there was a... Um, it was terrible and it was everywhere in New York, just like horrible, horrible, like hate crime, hate crime, hate crime, hate crime. And I'm like, I need to be a civil rights attorney. So that's what's going to happen. So, Cause like, I want to be able to sue the bad guys cause this is horrible. And I have other obscenities that I would like to use aimed at injustice for this particular situation and a lot of a rainbow of emotions, but like, I'm, I'll just hold it back for the sake of like production value. Uh, so I moved to Chicago mm -hmm. and I was like, I need to be linguistically equipped for this situation because I'm also trilingual and like, ha I'm not a certified translator. I'm actually going to be working on that, which is exciting. Nice. Uh, but, um, and I am still a translator and I don't want to brag or anything. Um, but can I just take this happy little little alley? Can I just Please go into do. a little? Please yeah. do. Yeah. It's called Deep dive brag. Into it. It's called brag alley. Okay. So not humble brag. That's a different. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the cul-de-sac um, where the elegant people live. Like We're on this X. other. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Gen X. Like I don't. I. I. What I like doing to my younger folk is I'll say like like some phrase or something and I'll space it all out and then do space and then do the hashtag at the end. <laughs> just use it wrong. That's cool. I love but it. I think I'm struck. I, anyway. Okay. So um, I'm sorry. So the happy thing is thus. Uh, I work very closely with an organization called Cielo, which is Comunidades Indígenas in Liderazgo and the org, um, everybody should fund them. Um, there it's my cielo. So M Y C I E L O dot O R G. Mm -hmm. And, um, what they are is it's like a, they do linguistic access advocacy for indigenous, um, language speaking individuals. And they're a collective, sorry, that was my elbow. We are okay to my West coast folks. <laughs> Who know about earthquakes, right? I think. Anyway, hopefully. Oh wow! No, did you? Feel, that was my elbow. Is what I said. Like, got it. Are, so okay, it was yeah, not okay. an earthquake. No, it was no, just we your are elbow okay. shaking the camera. Got that it. was a that was a Nora quake. Okay, <laughs> so, sorry about that. No worries. Um, so okay, so um, so the organization we work with them very closely. We have a lot of uh, clients who are undocumented um, immigrants who are monolingual um, indigenous language speaking primarily from uh, or overwhelmingly from Mexico and Guatemala. 
Um, and so they have a collective of interpreters and translators who are amazing, who speak hundreds of different variants of hundreds of different uh, indigenous languages. Mm -hmm. And so, and they're trained, like there are all kinds of another detour we could take that I'm not going to take us if the street is closed. Um, is uh, like the, the quality of interpretation and translation in um, removal hearings and just Im any kind oh, of immigration wow. yeah. hearings in general. Just good God. Uh, like literally I've seen immigration officers at USCIS go into the waiting room and yell out, anybody speak Spanish and English and like pull some stranger in to do wow. a case that's like, let's say, I mean, it's just a, it's a, it's a due process disaster. So um, that so I we moved to Chicago and then I ended up taking um, I want so in, sorry back to the whole like linguistic oh, oh sounds, no sounds like a doo doo process disaster just had to get that in there sorry that was really good thank you oh god that I was didn't, like um, I, was, I was waiting I was like, was like lands and bucket hat dad joke level there you go. Um, well, you did allow me to get on back, back on track because I was telling two different stories at once, so I appreciate you. Uh, so with as far as Cielo goes, they're totally incredible. Um, if you Google Odilia Romero and Vogue magazine, she's in it, as is her granddaughter, who I don't want to brag or anything, but I do because I braided her hair. So nice. technically, yeah. I've also been the hairstylist for somebody who has appeared in Vogue. Um, so also, there's that. Uh, but... The thing that's cool is this org, the, uh, the thing that's cool other than all the amazing stuff they do, the part that released is that they needed somebody to translate a document from legalese to Spanish to Quiche. And who better to do it than Nora Phillips? Hello, how you doing? Yup. So I am officially one of their translators for the language of lawyers which is generally i describe as uh there's a word and it's like i i don't know if i should say it it's i'll modify it's hard to modify basically like 90 percent like 90% Latin and 10% uh -huh. beep. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, and it's just so like educational, like class, not like mm. classes, but, but the, whatever the parallel word is for educationalist. It's just like, ugh. it's like word drag. One of my friends, yeah. one of my friend calls uh, like, Fancy, expensive court apparel that immigrant or that lawyers are supposed to wear class drag because mm. it's like so much pressure on law students and right. a lot of people, a lot of different professions to like wear a nice suit. It's like, oh, yeah, that's totally I can buy that. Yeah. Let me add that to my years of debt that I'm going to incur. <laughs> Panic attacks for a bunch of different reasons I've had it, like an Ann Taylor. Like, do you have like... When anyway. I was in college, I got most of my clothes from like Salvation Army. And like I could have like, you know, whatever. Like when I was yeah. when I was post JD 14 years and very very slowly working on her MPH now get stuff mostly at St. Vincent de Paul thrift store. So, it's essential. Also, if I could say if there are anybody, if there's anybody, just like to shout, give a little bit of a shout out to the thrift store. A, like way more sustainable because fast fashion is yeah. like trafficking city. And then also um, the Garment Worker Center in Los Angeles is amazing. You should check them out. They do a lot of anti, um, anti trafficking work for sweatshops. And then also the other thing is for like the new parents out there, especially, like get it used because it's just going to be gross. Right. Anyway. Yeah. A and little tidbit on. Go ahead. Tell me. 
No, I was just, I was just gonna say the fast fashion bit that Hassan Minhaj did on Patriot Act was very insightful uh, and eye opening oh, for I me. I love him. I have yeah. not seen that. Go for it. It's on Netflix. Okay, it's on Netflix. Okay, I'm gonna reach yeah. really far over because I twisted my camera to hide the mess of my house. Right. No worries. Nope. Yeah, Patriot Act, Hassan Minhaj, one of his more recent episodes. <sighs> Um, but let okay. So me, my Cielo does fantastic work. We wrapped my, up. Yeah, Cielo and the website is mycielo.org. Is there a mm -hmm. chat function for this new? Do, we'll we'll, like we'll put it in. Know? We'll put it in the I notes. Can, yeah. No, I'm going to be extra Gen X. Uh, I might even be Boomer right now because my uh, mouse seems to have disappeared. And we'll don't even worry about it. Nobody needs to know. Uh, so. Uh, and then you went to law school because of the backlash that you saw towards the Muslim community and wanting to defend the rights of your fellow Americans. Um, and from there, you bounced around to a few cities. You eventually landed in L.A. Career wise, um, what was your first gig as a lawyer and then kind of like take us through professionally? What, where you got to before you started Al Otro Lado. Succinctly, I, may, may I add. Oh, I will. <laughs> first, first time I've ever had that request in my life. Okay. <clears throat> my, my, my knee just hit the screen, so it was not an earthquake. That was, that was my knee. Like we're, we're just, yeah. It's this, a, is, this is like a seismic vibe, bruh. <laughs> All right, so real quick shout out. My hero was mm -hmm. my hero org that I wanted to work at was Center for Constitutional Rights in okay. New York City. And they wrap, I have the pleasure of them being um, our lawyers now in one of our many lawsuits. And um, I would just like to give a very, very big shout out to my lawyer and really good friend. Um, Bahar Azmi, who works at CCR, who has also worked uh, extensively with uh, Guantanamo detainees. Wow. And I have a brain crush on him, and he knows it. <laughs> uh, but he's just like, if you ever need a, if you, you, nobody ever wants to need a lawyer like him, but if sure. you do, yeah, he's your guy. He's one, one of the, anyway, there we go. Okay, so. Had an Equal Justice Works Fellowship for two years at Legal Assistance Foundation of Los Angeles or of uh, Metropolitan Chicago, and then uh, moved to LA. And then I worked as an expert. The first job I had was as an expert. Well, you want to hear about the first, the first job, or do you want to hear about all the jobs? Because we don't have a lot of time. Let, let's let's do your verbal LinkedIn profile of just like. I don't like, have LinkedIn. I don't have LinkedIn. I got creepy. You're messages. such a. You're such a boomer. Uh... <laughs> I'm like, I'm of sir, I shall have you know that demographically, technically, I am what is called a zenial. And same. they say that we have a same for you. Yeah, I'm a zenial. 85. Oh, you're like, um, well, that's. I'm close that's to, I'm closer to millennial. Threat. Look, I to... love, I love millennial. I, have I grew up Z. without the internet. Like internet was a thing from like high school for me. So like. Okay. Kind of. Yeah, yes. Yeah. That's fine. Like, but I, I have a Gen Z kid and I love millennials. So there you go. There's your boomer for you. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So then I had a, um, I worked as a consultant immigration expert for the on the u visa which is a type of uh, non-immigrant visa for victims of crimes that's kind of like one of my mm -hmm. neat areas been doing that for like since like 2006 um and then i got a job at caras on the central american resource center in los angeles and i was a staff attorney for um doing u visas and some um self petitions under under the violence against women act which is also for survivors of family violence without getting into a 90, 90 minute footnote with a PowerPoint. Yeah. Um, and then just kidding. I prefer Google slides. Um, then I worked there for four years and then I 
got pregnant and then I was like, this isn't going to work because of schedule, because of, you know, new human, just like a variety of things. So I, um, ended up, uh, having my baby. Um, and then, and then I ended up shortly thereafter, um, leaving Carasen and opening up my own private practice with another friend, um, Laura Urias, who's still, um, my buddy and she's a great immigration lawyer in LA. Um, and we had a law firm, Phillips and Urias LLP. We had a cute little butterfly logo and we did all kinds of stuff, you know, detained ICE, family petitions, like naturalization, all the things. Um, but I had been doing Al Otro Lado, I co-founded it in 2011. So I'd been mm -hmm. doing like double job kind of situation. I didn't get paid sure. in 2015 or something. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, you know who gets elected in 2016. And then I cannot even say the name. I and then, um, yeah. Um, I heard somebody call a PT. I have complex PT. Sorry, TMI, but I have, you need to know this to see that it, maybe I can make this joke that I saw that, um, somebody who also has is like PTSD TikTok. She was like, I'm going to stop calling my flashbacks, flashbacks. I'm going to call them spicy deja vu. <laughs> so I, spicy deja vu every time I even see his name. So I can't, yeah. Anyway, so he who shall not be named got elected. And even before that person took office, the C, the change on the border by border by CBP customs and border mm -hmm. protection was like immediate. It was like, you're not getting in, no asylum seekers, no refugees, go to the consulate, go to a refugee camp, hmm. closest one in Peru, like really awful things. And then eventually just saying like the borders are closed to asylum seekers. So everything was, so it was like 911. So I quit at the, um, at the firm and, um, or I left the firm. I wasn't like, I'm out of here. It was like, <laughs> It's been an amazing experience. I love your baby. We're going to text every day still kind of thing. So then I uh, just kind of became like full-time, full-time overtime at Al Otro Lado. And yeah. we went from like, you know, I don't know, like three, three staff in like uh, 2018 or 2017 to like, you know, 40 staff. Wow. And we're at Asociación Civil in Mexico as well. And we have an office in TJ. We have an office in, uh, in, uh, or sorry, in Tijuana. We have an office in uh, San Diego. We have an office mm -hmm. in Maywood. We have an office in um, LA County Hospital, which is where I work. And I am like in-house counsel for. I manage two programs. We also have a litigation program, a huge mm -hmm. program in Tijuana that serves asylum seekers. And then I run um, two programs, which are the healthcare legal program that we have at LA County hospital where I'm like in-house counsel for free for like the, for to like assess and refer out to pro bonos and other orgs for like the, I'm based in child abuse pediatrics. Okay. So it's like, you know, just, I don't want to, I'm also a big fan of prevention of vicarious trauma. So I'm not going to tell you what those yeah. cases yeah. But in addition to XYZ horror, the kid is also in removal proceedings. And sometimes they're pre-verbal orphans, sorry. Wow. Like just my template cover letter folder yeah. could like someone I'm so sorry that I had to tell you details about things. And and not at all, because people need to know the real life situation that a lot of these kids are going through. And, yeah, and they are so fortunate to have you and Al Otro Lado on their side, because if it isn't for nonprofit organizations and lawyers who have that drive to do this day in and day out, and I can't imagine that it's easy, um, like just no. bless you, like amazing oh, on you. you and all the other people who are in this fight to provide basic decent human rights for children who are being detained and deported and sent to detention camps so my heart goes out to you and your entire team for what you do every single day thank you thank of course you. yeah oh f1 um is that right was that right it, it definitely is i speak i speak urdu and hindi growing up so 
that Wait, the, I, uh, Afwan, I think is uh, I'm Shukran. sorry. I think Shukran is the thank you. But is or, it, I thought Afwan was your welcome. Probably, yeah. I've said some wrong things for a while. <laughs> Too long before. Uh, 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 Afwan is correct. sorry. Afwan is sorry. So like, I just oh. I just eloquently like said the most sincere thank you to you and you're like sorry no 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 i'm from i'm from the northern midwest i'm fluent in apologies so that's actually <laughs> it's, uh, that's i apologize to Touché. i sue ice i sue ice and I yet apologize to furniture yeah. so yeah. um but wait i can say how i can say things real quick in i think both languages so let me okay. humiliate myself okay ready um Ana ismi Nura. My name is Nura. Yes, and okay. then um uh ooh. Mira nam Nura hey. There you go. Congrats. Yes! Well done. You you earned you earned your credibility as a white woman providing human rights law to children. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I, feel, I feel like I, that's a hard thing to, to, it's a wonderful thing for you to say. It's just kind of like a, I feel like to have credibility is like something that you got to like work for so hard and it's like every day kind of thing, you know, but like, uh, yeah. That's no, really nice I, I can, no, your, your I heart's in the right place. I by compliments yes. also, so yeah. there's that. Um, but I, I yeah. love what you do. I love what El Otro Lado does. Let's, you know, if you don't mind, you know, obviously during the whole political time of the presidency in, in that time frame that we're not going to talk about, we as a country saw so much outreach and um, outpour of support philanthropically for mm -hmm. a handful of organizations of which Al Otro Lado was one of the many significant organizations. So yeah. let's talk about how that dynamic shift altered the course of Al Otro Lado. You talked about going from a staff of three to having a staff of 40. That's monumental change. And how do you navigate that organizationally? It's like a really well padded kayak. It's like, cause you said navigate and my brain was like, what? <laughs> Metaphor time? Um, but for real, like I, I think that it was an enormous change and it's gonna cause some, you know, you've got like the old guard who, sure. you know, like I'm, I'm gonna inevitably as a human, like things are going to change. I'm like, you just got to be comfortable with it. You know, even if, you know, you feel like somebody, you got to like let go. So I, we got you, if, if, if we expanded dramatically because we were one of the organizations that um, responded, I think we were up the most clients out of any other org for the separated families due to the zero tolerance policy at the border. So mm -hmm. we were the only org. I think people found out about us and then sort of looked to check our credentials, which as any, which any and every funder should, um, right. who was on the ground, who was, um, you know, who had the, who like had local connections, who was trustworthy, all the things that you want to, you know, that you want to look for. Um, and then they realized that we'd been there for since I think I, we're trying to figure out whether it's the first clinic was 2011 or whether it was 2012, but we got it all planned in 20. Anyway, it was a long time ago. So yeah. almost 10 years. So, um, so yeah. Um, sorry. I, my brain completely went blank. It's That's I okay. Have. So, yeah, of course. Like the oh, influx no, no. of philanthropic support, like right, how exactly. how it changed the organization. So, so if you don't mind sharing for people, like how many millions yeah. of dollars over a short period of time that just it, comes so in the influx. Up, we had, yeah, no problem. So we had. I'll just tell you our our like our operating budget. Yeah. So it went from 
about, I think it went from like $18,500 in 2017 to like $4.1 million now. Wow. Which Literally, was that is awesome. insane. Believable. <laughs> so in so many ways. Yeah. And the it's gonna I think that like so another kudos to you for not just like up and leaving. <laughs> like I would have been like payday for everyone. <laughs> like you stuck with it. You doubled down. You were like, we're gonna totally expand this stuff and like I mean, do... are we not going to? The baby I mean it's oh my god. No, I know. like I I the horrors of capitalism. I get it. Yeah. 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 I want to, and I want to burn it all down while building other mm -hmm. structures at the same time. I'm not an yes. anarchist. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, no, oh my God, no, that's, this is, I mean, we started this for, we didn't, we didn't start, uh, contrary to a lot of people's belief, we did not start as an organization to serve asylum seekers in Tijuana. Mm -hmm. I started it with my friend um, Esmeralda Flores, who currently works at ACLU of San Diego, doing amazing work. We, she is a Mexican licensed attorney who was based in Casa del Migrante, which is a um, uh, it's a shelter in Tijuana. It's like the largest, oldest uh, men's shelter in Tijuana, and gets a mm -hmm. lot of receives a lot of people who've been deported. Sometimes, like literally, like less than a half hour before. Wow. And so, you know, these kids that were like born in or born in Mexico and came to the U.S. when they were like two and now they're like 19 years old and they're getting deported and they're like world is they're like in having like, you know, a psychotic break. And you're, you know, and she's like, check your computer. And I'm like, fires up the four by four inch Chromebook and, you know, do the thing. <laughs> And, and then, you know, try to fix the things or not, not fix, but like try to harm reduction, like make the things less terrible. So let's get you the housing referrals. Let's get you to the job training referrals. We're going to get you all of your documents. We're going to get you. So the police yeah. don't shake you down every week, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But the point of what I was trying to say is that we, the first problem with the program we ever had, which is our most underfunded program is the binational family unity program where, which is based in Tijuana and it was our first ever program. It was formerly known as our deportee program. And mm -hmm. it was working with folks who'd been deported mostly out of prison, who are just like literally spit through a turnstile into a place that it can be like really super scary. So anyway, we have always had an idea of the sort of like legal, legal and social service midwifery where we're able to kind of sign. And sometimes we know that folks are coming um, through because like their federal public defender is like, we fought it till the end of the line. There's no immigration relief. Right. The person's coming out tomorrow. They have schizophrenia, nomads, like families, you know, and you're, and we're ready for them. And so we have extremely limited resources though. So we can't really do much now for that program. But anyway, I just wanted to, to mention that because it's another aspect of our work that people don't really know about too much. I appreciate that. So if, when you give your elevator spiel, how do you explain Al Otro Lado to others? Um, that we're a, like how many floors in the elevator? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like... Scene, you remember the scene in Elf where he like pushes all, all of them? All of them. <laughs> I didn't do that, all right. Um, no, I think I describe us as a binational organization operating out of Tijuana, San Diego, Maywood, California, and Los Angeles County Hospital. Um, we provide free legal uh, direct services to individuals uh, in trauma-based immigration relief. So we don't do, you know, we don't do cases unless there's some really sad stuff involved. Uh, and we also have a vibrant litigation program uh, relating specifically to fighting for the rights of immigrants and refugees, particularly those with uh, medical vulnerabilities, um, Black and Indigenous migrants, and individuals in ICE custody. Nice. So you literally went from like a bootstrapped organization where you volunteered for about seven to eight years, and then you get this influx of millions of dollars now, since that moment in 2017, 2018, when, when that happened, 
have you been able to sustain your own funding and has it been consistent? Has it kind of worked for the organization since then? So since the separated families 2008 sort of influx, so we were gaining more and more kind of recognition philanthropically in like 2017 as well, um, was, um, let's see, it was really, you know, it, it dropped off after separated families because unfortunately there's this phenomenon where once the same asylum seeking child crosses over the U.S. border, people don't care as much because it's less sort of ex Mm. it's less like yeah it's not considered like my own school's public health program doesn't consider refugee and immigrant health a global health issue because including people over the board like in border towns so it's sort of like disregarded it's much more attractive um to a lot of funders to like the, the same pro that same program was talking about like um you know doing their like access to water rights in african countries and so we're very much more kind of local um and so uh yeah so anyway it dropped off and um mm -hmm. we our our main priority is um you know striking the balance between staff wellness and you know capacity and need so we hired a lot of staff to do services because it's kind of terrif it's kind of impossible not to in the face of things that are totally like obviously speakable but i'm not going to speak them for everyone's benefit you can imagine um just horrifying things um and i don't want to get all like rainbow of feelings on this so um, if, but if anybody wants um, any information about some of the stuff that we do, you know, feel free to reach out, obviously. But just the things that happen to, you know, especially the little kids and the moms, and it's just yeah. really, um, anyway, but we had, we, we hired a lot of service people. We did not hire uh, core support accordingly. So there was an imbalance that we are in the process of correcting the, um, okay. you know, all so like really diversify diverse diversity is good for like everything so we just you know we we're not you know we're dependent on a ver well we're funded by a you know a variety of different sources so private foundations family foundations um uh state funds we're going to be applying for some federal ones we didn't really do that in the last couple of years can't imagine why um but now that is um happening again that's exciting and then just uh you know not just pursuing things for like legal services uh, for example, like we have a lot of social, really exciting social service referral pathway work going on in Tijuana for people who have like, so we're looking into like potential funding for those programs. That's like totally outside of the normal, you know, immigrant rights litigation funders, et cetera, uh, kind of profile. And then also for like the healthcare uh, legal stuff in the hospital, that's a whole other kind of pool of funders that we're sort of um, are getting more and more sort of excited, the more awareness there is of the program. So, you know, we, we, I don't want to make us sound like really cool or anything, but we were, I able think you to, are yeah. I'm gonna think my therapist thanks you. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't think, okay, see, I just got distracted. I need to work. I don't, I need to work on the compliment thing, like for more than I thought. Um, I, okay. So not to like brag or anything, but we got enough. It wasn't dedicated. It was unrestricted funding, Sure. which you're going to probably be not surprised about that once I tell you the funders. Um, but we got enough, I think it was like 68,000 to be able to, you know, hire a, uh, a staff attorney with benefits and end up like throwing in a little extra cause we have good benefits. Also very important. Don't be performative. Don't, don't put up like, well, this is not to the, to the funders. It's a problem that you just need to kind of check into with works. Like if they're talking wellness, 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 ask them what their benefits are. Mm -hmm. how much the, they pay okay 
Like, I don't want a little cat hanging on a branch that says, hang in there. I want, like, <laughs> yo, oh I want to get away from you people that I love. That's the goal of, like, mm -hmm. go ahead, like, boundaries, go. I hate borders, but I love boundaries. So, um, anyway, um, sorry, you said a compliment and then my brain shut off. What did you say? So you said the, you were able to get $68,000 in funding oh. for benefits to bring on the staff a member. From a rave, from a series of pre COVID raves in New York city. Like dance party raves, like they raised money or what? Like get the glow, like go to glow Costco sticks, the glow and stick, Marge. Like yes, that's fantastic. And they were like, "We're gonna donate our proceeds to El Otro Lado." Yes. So the total over a couple of raves was sixty-eight thousand dollars. I want to go to that rave. Oh my right? god! I mean, not now. Epidemiologically, very bad idea. But when the time yeah. is right. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think not only do you want to go to the rave, you want to be the attorney who's like, hi, I'm the Melting Pot NYC fellow. <laughs> they're like, I'm sponsored by some giant law firm. And I'm like, oh, yeah. It's cool. They fly me out to New York to go to the raves. It's a business expense. Like, no big. Um, <laughs> anyway, I said that to a friend who works in academia and was like, what? And I'm like, yeah, it's not NIH. <laughs> um, no shade to NIH, but also the other thing too, is that like social media can be an incredible fundraiser, especially when you have sure. Melissa Flores. I would love to actually just like biggest, biggest shout out. Oh my goodness. Melissa Flores is our, um, she's in charge of communications for mm -hmm. Al Otro Lado and social media. And she is just so fabulous at her job she understands us ideologically she represents us ideologically does an incredible job of that and um and i think you know we've we've been able to grow our social media presence because i was the social media manager like did you think our <laughs> website was terrible a couple years ago sorry um did you think that you know like i was the person if it was ugly and had regrettably bright colors i did it um, and so now we, it's not me, thank God. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, like, um, so what would you say you've learned in scaling an operation and organization? Like what was your biggest takeaway, uh, out of all of this? That core support is critical. It's absolutely critical. It's critical for so many different things for wellness of staff um for um just organization of it's like the organization of the organization it's the as it's this it's the skeleton you know and then you've got like hi i'm cartilage what's up um and then you know like you've got like i'm actually the i'm like the i you know we could sometimes we need to be the tendons sometimes we need to be and we just sort of Somebody's like, oh, I'm the central nervous system. That's usually me. And so then, but you're all working together, but you need the the core support. Otherwise, you know, it, you're it's not going to go well if you're having to deal with family separation, a family separation case you're doing, and then you've got to like, you know, code switch to like doing some like processing a wire and then you're back, you know, interviewing like a traumatized deported father, you know, whose kid has been placed in foster care. And you're like, then you got to, you know, eat, call FedEx and be like, what Mordor cast spell box do I need to unlock to be able to change the billing email for this account? I, I feel like this was an actual day in your life and it's not a joke because oh, no, this no, is no, like, no. <laughs> yeah, like- You don't I, even know, that was literally a portion of this morning. Yeah. A portion of this morning. The day for me will be over in a, in a, in a, in many hours. Yeah. Which is something that's like, just, it's really bad. It's a very much like. So, so now 
looking organizationally, like after you well, can I say yeah, something? Go like, please, please. So like I make it extraordinarily I schedule my email because mm -hmm. I don't want to see yeah. like horrible boss that's like working after hours, like hey, yeah. very clear that the only like the only thing I will ever send you mm -hmm. after hours uh, is like a meme, like for Ricardo, one of our BIA reps is incredible. He wins everything. Same with Mahina. Oh my God, I love you. Oh my God. Uh, like if it's anything parkour related, <laughs> like it's a parkour yeah. TikTok involving yeah. like an otter. Okay. Uh -huh. Not like, Oh my God, I need you here. Whatever that would be, you know? So anyway, um, I, uh, in terms of boundaries, extraordinarily important. You mm -hmm. want to ask staff if you can as a funder for like anonymous stuff. I mean, that might go, I don't know. The internal stuff of an org is always, you know, can be very retaliatory and scary. So, um, however, um, I think, oh my God, help me. I'm so sorry. This is so embarrassing. This is no, it's okay. Things. So, so what I wanted to ask was like coming through that experience, you learned these things operationally right. that you needed to, uh, implement and maintain through the years. And you were going on, uh, talking about the body, the nervous system, the cartilage, the tendons. Yeah. yeah. And, and then from that though, like if like what support do you need as a co-founder and a legal director to keep focusing on strategy and high level operations so that Al Otro Lado can be a stronger organization moving forward. Okay, so thank you for that question. Um, I have a few ideas. So first would be like more money for core support. It's not like, for sure. I, hate yep. when, I hate it when people say like sexy when they're talking about like, right. Just some like really vulnerable we, they want it like but foundations want to found the sexy it's program. Like, it's, it's simultaneous. But, gross and dehumanizing so we will say a like attractive or like yeah. hot new hot thing or whatever so nobody's like oh yeah we're gonna give money to hire a, a grants manager but they should because that amen is to a, that a miracle job i yep. just got an actual dermatological reaction to it like it's a miracle person mm -hmm. job that speaks a whole language that i don't and with and like budgets and all of that. It's just, mm -hmm. it's like a skill that is so critically undervalued. hundred percent. And I just like, please, if you want us to have more money, help us hire the people who help us get more money. <laughs> when you send this clip, fast forward to 52 minutes and 29 <laughs> seconds and just send it to all your funders where it's you breaking down, crying, asking for more money. I mean, like, while we're at it, like, well, honestly. Okay, so one of the other things, too, is to help us with interpretation money for specifically a budget, like awesome. a line item for interpretation and translation. Please, please. Yeah. Then what ends up following, sorry, this is like, I'm in a basement, slash, I blushed a couple times, slash, I don't want to turn the fan on, so sorry if I'm sweaty. Um, okay. You're glowing, Nora. Our house blowing. is built in 1903, and we don't have air conditioning. So, sorry, I'm keeping it very as real as I can. So, um, appreciate it. Yeah. So uh, that's really critically important, especially because a lot of the folks who are interpreters, particular. Well, okay, a everything is racist all the time. That's just sort of how I start every morning, mm -hmm. and then I, I'm sort of like the burden's on somebody to prove it's not. And so uh, interpretation and translation, super racist, uh, lots of, in, of, of uh, parallels in terms of power structures to colonialism to the point where it's actually like really not like grab your Zofran, it's very nauseating. Interesting. I have Zofran, it's a pharmacal, it's, very, it's a very good drug. I hope nobody, uh, sorry, anyway. Uh, so yes, it's really, really, really bad. Um, and, uh, indigenous folks, for example, are asked to interpret for free all the time, mm. whereas the same org will be like, oh my God, how much for a French interpreter? Got it. 
like we need a german interpreter we have never i don't know if we've ever needed a german interpreter but like and i'm not basing this off of our own organization i'm like we yeah. paid people you know and like also our own staff among us we like we have like a we speak a billion languages so sure. but um that happens all the time mm -hmm. and then you'd be shocked at the things that you hear uh in language departments at hospitals like horrible racial slurs by oh, the Lord. um light skinned Mexican staff referring to people from Oaxaca and Guerrero. So that's well also yeah, crazy. yeah. I yeah. I could share stories of just people who are immigrants themselves being racist. Like that is very common. Oh, yeah. Like yeah, it, oh, it's oh, everywhere. Oh, um, oh, it's a, there's a wonderful expression in Spanish yeah. that I feel like just captures it. Which just says, which is just "I de todos," they, which basically means like "there's everyone." Yeah. There is like there's you know, but but it means somehow because language is beautiful, it somehow means like you know there's bad people and good people everywhere. But all you have to say is four syllables. "I de todos," like what? Sorry. That's brilliant. Where where did you learn your Spanish? Um. As I say to people who ask me in Spanish, es una historia muy larga. <laughs> it's a very it's long, a very story. long story. I, yeah. Which I just do is the answer. I had two years in high school, and then I have lived in predominantly uh, Spanish-speaking communities, and wow. I have uh, most of my friends uh, are Spanish-speaking and stuff. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I love it. And it's also really helpful for me cognitively because sometimes I'll just like my, my preferred language is Spanglish because it'll just. Sure. Great just, movie, by the way. Switch, but yeah. anyway, it's cool. I, yeah, I don't want to cause you another brain aneurysm, but you're very good at it. Oh, thank you. Yes. No, we are yeah. good. Neuro yes. yeah. <laughs> I have a wonderful neurologist also, Kaiser Sunset, L.A., she we're good we just yeah. like we just kind of talk now it's like kind of fun yeah anyway um okay can you cut that part out um so uh what was the next thing so really no i just you know i wanted to learn a little bit more about like the organizational challenges but you you know i think you shared in terms of you know where you want to see the organization grow um and Really, like, you know, I want to express to everyone um, that they should go to alotrolado.org, A-L-O-T-R-O-L-A-D-O.org. Um, and you can find them on social media at alotrolado underscore org. Um, and go volunteer, go donate, go support the cause. Uh, you because don't have to be a lawyer and you don't have to speak any other languages to volunteer okay got it's it very difficult for a lot of folks to 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 donate money though obviously it's what pays the bills uh but in terms of volunteering it's a really great experience and you don't have to be an attorney don't have to speak English. sorry i always want to say that because we get that question all the time yeah of course um you know i really wish you the best because honestly when when I first learned about your organization and everything happening at the border, like so many people, and I think this is what motivated their philanthropic support, just felt helpless. They didn't know what to do or how yeah. to help. So they wanted uh -huh. to give, right? Right. And yes. the situation hasn't really gotten any better at the border. Nope. And people still need to know that they can count on your organization to fulfill that societal need to help other people. And oh, yeah. if, if there's anything that comes of this, I hope that people give your org a follow, they give your org a like, they give them whatever money that is meaningful to them to support your organization, whether that's somebody only has 10 bucks to give or $10,000 to give. Absolutely. I, I hope that they, invest in your team in your operation so that you can hire the staffing that you need to be more effective and good at what you do and we're that currently hiring for a chief operations officer amen i hope you find the best candidates oh, 
please, I, any, anyone who can hear me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Um, thank you so much. This yeah, really for sure. Nice. And it's feel, it still feels like I'm simultaneously exhausted and like in awe of how surreal this all feels that I even get to like work with my staff. Yeah. So it's just like, we had some numbers the other day that were just ridiculous. Um, I want to, I'll send them to you later. Um, but for just sure. in terms of like, uh, like, like, I think we helped like 6,000 people just for one type of service at the border in like a year. Like we're, we're, we're scrappy. That's awesome. So the team is just incredible. Anyway, sorry. I talked too much. No, not at all. Um, okay. you, you know, I think that more people need to hear about what you're doing and that's exactly why I wanted to bring you onto the podcast. Um, so, you know, Anything that I personally can do or that American Muslim Community Foundation can do uh, to support your work, we're all in. So, um, yeah, let's continue to stay in touch. And, I, again, everybody should go to alotrolado.org uh, and learn more about Al Otro Lado and Nora Phillips. Thank you so much for being on the show Thank today. You. Thank you so much. Of course. Take Bye. care. Bye, you too. Bye.